All right. Well, it's um, it's great to be here with you all. My name is Finn Glover. I'm the founder and CEO of Matcha, and I'm grateful to Phil and to Paula for arranging such a great event and for having us all here um, and, and inviting me to speak about our product and what we're building and why we care so much about blogging uh, in, the, in the e-commerce space, a space in which Blogging has not always been the star of the show, but, but that we think is poised for a lot of growth. Um, and so I'm going to talk uh, today about um, a lot of the data that we see with our customers and how they're leveraging their blogs to grow their traffic, build their community, uh, and ultimately influence their revenue. Um, and I want to start by talking a little bit about our story as a company. So today we're based in Atlanta, Georgia. We're a team of engineers, designers, and marketers, um, mostly out of Atlanta, but, but fully remote at this point, and um, have folks working from California, Colorado, Tennessee, and Georgia as well. And um, our business is, is not really a very linear story. I started the company a long time ago now, at this point in, in 2012, and I started the company um, as a publishing business. At the time, it was called RootsRated.com, which was a site designed to help an outdoor enthusiasts and adventure travelers discover the best outdoor experiences in the country. And so we ran that business from 2012 to 2015. The site grew into one of the largest sites for outdoor discovery in the country. And along the way, we learned a couple of things that would ultimately uh, move us toward transitioning our business from publishing to, to software. Um, the first thing that we learned was how to create, distribute, and measure content at a relatively large scale. Uh, during that period, we must have created about 15,000 um, text-based articles with imagery. And as that expertise evolved, we also learned that um, lean marketing teams, particularly within the outdoor and travel industries, needed that expertise and were more interested and willing to pay for um, blogging services and blog production than they were for advertising and sponsorships. And so that led us to pivoting our company in 2016. Um, we productized portions of our publishing stack so that we could make not content marketing, which I view as this very amorphous blanket term at this point, but blogging very specifically, um, much less frictionful and much more measurable for e-commerce brands. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about our product at the end of the presentation and what it does. But right now, I'd like to focus mostly on this question of does blogging matter in the context of e-commerce and how can it matter? So a lot of people talk about content marketing broadly. Some people talk about blogging. Shopify has in the past referred to blogging as this essential tool or channel for growth and for differentiation. And for good reason, right? Blogging grows traffic, it generates leads, it builds trust, it influences purchases and engages customers. And these are all well-known truths. But the reality is that in e-commerce, blogging has not been widely adopted, especially when compared to B2B marketing. And we think that there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that um, blogging isn't direct response. And so it takes longer to influence a business's performance. And for a long time, in fact, there, there really weren't tools available to marketers to help them quickly understand whether a blog article had, had actually influenced any revenue, had any directly attributable uh, ROI. You know, for the last decade, with advertising being as cheap as it's been, it's been easier for marketers to drive returns through paid social and direct response ads than it has been through building a blog, which, which takes time and more upfront lift. And we think the second reason is that blogging software actually isn't doing the job that it needs to do for merchants at this point. Um, so that we have our, tax, our taxonomy in place, we view the blog as a channel, we view the blog article as an asset, and we view the CMS as a tool. And when we look at the blog as a channel, we know that it's this productive channel for building traffic, not only from search, but also from social and email. When we look at the blog article as an, indep as an independent asset, it's this highly useful and productive asset that can serve to inspire and enable and educate a customer. We would look at the CMS as a tool for the creation of better blog assets and a more effective customer acquisition channel. What's been apparent to us is that the tooling e-commerce merchants have available them, to them to create assets that will monetize and grow subscriber bases and provide customer insights don't really exist. And it's this gap that 
is driving us and our mission and the way we're, we're thinking about how we develop the software that we're building. So we're obviously really bullish on blogging. And um, over the next five years, our bet is that blogging will be much more central to e-commerce success than it has been over the last five years. And, and part of this, again, is due to you know, advertising becoming more expensive as everyone advertises on just a handful of platforms. But part of this is also due to the explosion in the number of companies and, and the ensuing competition. I think Mary Meeker is, is, is the person who called this the direct-to-consumer revolution or the SMB revolution. And so our hypothesis is that over the next five years, those companies who invest in blogging will be more differentiated than their, than their competitors. They'll enjoy greater success, and, and, and they'll also enjoy more sustainable growth. And so I want to look um, at some of the data that supports why we believe this, why we believe the blog has such a bright future in e-commerce. And I'm going to be pulling um, um, from our customer base. So we integrate with um, the Shopify carts of our customers. And so we're able to track the blog's impact across the funnel from traffic to subscriber growth to revenue influence. We also um, tag all articles um, with different tags associated with persona, geography, content type, et cetera. And that allows us to associate individual email addresses with um, content metadata, which um, infuses some of the, the segmentation that we're trying to make available to marketers around content consumption. So I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So when we look at what's true of companies who are seeing high impact from blogging, we've seen several patterns that, that seem to be true of, of companies whose blogs are performant. The first is that there's really good product market fit. And um, if you're creating blog content and people are discovering it organically, it means that you've created a product that people are really curious about and that has natural pinup demand. And the second reason is that the blog um, is such a useful channel for differentiating the customer experience and personalizing it. Blogging and, and e-commerce, we've found, typically takes on two different content types. The first is really a content type focused on aspiration, um, to some extent entertainment or inspiration. And the second type is, is typically much more utilitarian. Uh, excuse me, utilitarian. It's about answering frequently asked questions from customers um, or enabling the product to be more effectively or frequently used by the customer. And the third reason is about CAC and LTV. We all know that CAC is the new rent, and it turns out uh, that blogging is this very effective way to reduce CAC um, by increasing organic traffic over time. But it's also this really effective way to increase lifetime value when blog content is repurposed and recycled in the post-purchase experience. Um, so we've seen three patterns emerge when we look uh, at our healthiest customers. And I'm going to talk in a minute about three different matcha customers. They're all different types of customers, but they all share these patterns. The first pattern is that um, they typically have a healthier mix of paid versus unpaid traffic. You know, early on, we, we often see customers um, and companies skew much more heavily towards paid in the beginning. Um, but at a certain period of time, paid and unpaid start to reach parity, and eventually unpaid surpasses paid. When that starts to happen, you start to see a business that is growing not only more efficiently from the CAC to LTV ratio standpoint, but also more sustainably. They're reliant less on um, an unprofitable acquisition of a customer. And the second pattern we see is that companies that are achieving that type of unpaid versus paid traffic profile have a very regular publishing cadence, often in the four to five times per month type range and sometimes higher than that. And the third pattern and in the final pattern that we see is a significant amount of revenue influenced by blog articles. Um, you know, one of the things that I think has made blogging hard for e-commerce marketers to adapt in the past has been it's not quite easy uh, to see the direct influence of blog consumption on revenue. And we've tried to make that easy with our product. Across our total customer base, um, what we see is that the average store at this point has 10% of their revenue influenced by blog consumption. And from the companies that we have found to be growing the most efficiently and, and growing uh, uh, and, and, and our best customers, we see blog influence revenue typically in the 20 to 30% range, which is 
which is something that's felt very inspiring and promising to us to see blog consumption influence nearly a third of a company's revenue. Um, so I want to talk about three matcha customers. And um, I'm going to start with a company called C to Summit. Uh, this is a legacy brand in a commoditized market. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, then I want to talk about Almond Cow, which is an Atlanta-based company, a newly invented product that's fantastic. And then I'd like to talk about Everly, which is um, a really interesting subscription-based niche CBG, CPG product. And I'm going to try to focus um, their stories around uh, not only their industries, but the type of blogging that they do, their content types, their publishing frequency, uh, and the results that they've, that they've been able to generate over the last couple of years as they've built out their blog practice. So um, let me start with Cita Summit. So um, for those of you who are into outdoor recreation or adventure travel, you may recognize CETA Summit. This is a, I, I believe the company is close to 40 years old at this point, founded out of Australia. Um, and in 2018, they uh, empowered Amanda Schreier, who I've gotten to know quite well, to lead, uh, lead their e-commerce effort and bring CETA Summit online. Um, they're, they, they were, I think, very smart to, to start their e-commerce business on Shopify. Um, and, uh, you know, what's so interesting to me about this type of company is that it's operating in a, an incredibly competitive market with, um, you know, a somewhat commoditized product and lots of other well-known brands selling similar products. And one of the challenges that they have is they have to appeal to a very technical audience. They call that type of audience the top of the mountain audience, folks that are doing relatively extreme things, but they also have to make their brand and their products accessible to a broader market of folks who, who are not so extreme and who might be, you know, camping once a year or hiking, you know, a few times, a few times a year or doing things like glamping. And so what Amanda has focused on is um, a type of content, two types of content. One is aspirational. You can see in the screen here, she's focused on content that is really about inspiring the audience um, to go out and participate in the activities that uh, are really conduits to her products. So these are, these are articles like 21 Great Backcountry Hikes in Colorado. But she's also focused on article types that I, I really view as product, uh, product purchasing guides. Um, her products are technical enough that there needs to be some explanation so that certain audiences, uh, some who may be more extreme, some who may be more moderate, know which products are right for them. And those are the types of articles that perform particularly well for, him, for her in the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. From a publishing cadence, she's published six to eight blog articles a month for the last couple of years. That's a combination of custom content that she's creating in-house or sourcing through freelancers. It's also some combination of, of syndicated content that she's licensing from professional publishers in the outdoor industry. Um, and she's been able to use her blog to not only grow social traffic and organic traffic, but also to um, influence revenue very directly. She typically sends out several emails a week, all of which contain repurposed or recycled blog content. And over the last um, two years, she's seen her blog grow to contribute nearly, uh, to influence nearly a quarter of, of the business's revenue on a monthly basis. And so it's been, it's been really impressive growth for her on that front. The next company I want to talk about is um, Almond Cow. And I, I don't know how many of you listening to this drink almond milk. Um, I, I do and um, moved to almond milk ultimately to uh, uh, reduce dairy intake. But Almond Cow is this brilliant product. They, they really got off the ground a couple of years ago through Kickstarter. Um, couple of uh, Georgia Tech engineers, I believe, who built this machine to help people who love almond milk um, create their own almond milk at home. So if you prefer to avoid almond milk at the store that has a lot of preservatives um, and a lot of other ingredients and you just want pure almond milk, maybe with a dash of syrup or a date for sweetener, um, this machine helps you make your own almond milk in 30 seconds. And you know, this company is, is an interesting one. They're pure play e-commerce. They're not dealing with kind of legacy brand. 
but they're, they're competing for a, a behavioral shift. And so the type of content that they have focused on, the type of blog articles they've focused on, have been those types that would enable their customer base to use their product more frequently and more consistently. And that has manifested itself largely in the context of recipe-based content. For the last couple of years, they have produced two recipes a week, um, and they've leveraged those recipes uh, initially produced for their blog across other social channels like Pinterest. When they started using matcha, they had no idea how much revenue their blog content was influencing. They assumed it was important. But what we found is that over the last year and a half, their blog has influenced over 30% of the company's revenue, which has been so cool to see and I think speaks to how important it is to enable and empower your customers, especially when you've released uh, a new product like this. The third uh, company that I want to talk a little bit about is Everly. Um, Everly is a company, uh, you know, in some ways similar to Almond Cow in the sense that they're selling into the CPG market. But Everly manufactures a drink mix. It's sugar free. Um, you can add it to your water. Um, it has electrolytes and, and um, other proteins. And I've gotten to know their CEO quite well. He, he came into the business not as the founder, but as the chief operating officer when they had founded the company and um, gotten a lot of traction at, at retail with companies like Whole Foods and, and Kroger. But quickly they struggled to get enough sell through on the shelves and they had to pivot the business to pure play e-commerce. And that was really challenging and Ryan did a really fantastic job of, of moving the business to e-commerce. At this point, 50% of their business is on Amazon, 50% of their business is, through, is direct through Shopify. And he's done a fantastic job of building um, a recurring revenue-based company uh, based on subscriptions to Everly, whereby customers are subscribing to get um, boxes of, of the drink packets every month. And similar to Almond Cow, he's also focused on a content type that is enabling to his customers. But I think what's particularly interesting and useful um, as a lesson about Everly is that he really struggled two years ago um, to know who he was actually creating content for. And so he began experimenting with creating articles focused on different subsets of health-based communities, um, subsets like keto, uh, keto, keto dieters, um, and, and uh, other groups like that. And what he found after about a month and a half is that there was this huge uptick in response from folks that cared about the keto diet. So he started producing more blog articles and more recipe-based content about the keto diet. And that turned into a flywheel of success that has produced um, a couple thousand blog readers a month coming through organic traffic um, rather than paid and um, has over the last year um, equated to roughly 25% of the business's revenue um, influenced by the consumption of those keto-based recipes. And so I find this to be one of those really fascinating stories about how um, content can actually help us discover who our audience is and serve as a spearhead in some ways for audience discovery. So probably a, a lot more to talk about for each of these businesses, they've all got um, their own unique challenges, their own unique opportunities. But the patterns, again, have been their ability to publish frequently, their ability to reduce their reliance on paid traffic and replace it with unpaid traffic, um, and ultimately their ability to continuously and gradually grow the influence of their blog on revenue so that they can determine very clearly the ROI. So, um, one of the things that I, I, you know, we as Matcha hope is that the stories of companies like Almond Cow, um, Everly, Cita Summit um, can serve to accelerate the success of other companies who are looking to reduce their reliance on paid social and deliver richer customer experiences through blog content. And part of the role that we hope to play in that is making blogging easier. If uh, if any of you have ever tried to blog really consistently, you know how hard it is, um, unless you're just an extremely talented writer. Um, but blogging is really hard because it's this very multidimensional problem 
that has lots of friction um, across the whole problem set. You know, at the, at the very kind of beginning of, of the effort, creating articles that actually influence revenue requires a huge amount of activation energy um, and consideration about what the audience would want, what the audience is searching for. Um, and the second challenge is once you've actually created the article, you have to distribute it through a variety of channels, but you also have to optimize it. You have to optimize it for certain conversion events, like click through to product pages or um, subscriber generation. Um, and finally, once you've uh, created the blog article, distributed the blog article, optimized it for success, you have to start measuring attribution. And, and ultimately, you want to measure attribution in such a way that you understand the per article's impact on the business from a sales standpoint. But you also want to be able to generate insights about your audience uh, based on the content that they consume, as Everly did with, with the keto-based audience. So our goal um, over the years has been to help businesses solve these types of problems. Our goal over the last year specifically has been to create a CMS that's purpose-built for e-commerce and that plugs seamlessly uh, or in a headless way into your Shopify store. And we think about our product uh, through the lens of four key features. The first is what we call the blog builder in CMS. Effectively, it is a um, article editor that provides um, fill in the blank professionalized templates to accelerate creation and move out of, uh, to reduce the activation energy that's often associated at that very beginning uh, moment when you have to sit down and actually write. Um, the second component of, of Blog Creator is all about the ability to embed what we call e-commerce elements. Um, e-commerce elements include user-generated content collections, um, products that are, that are pulled from the Shopify catalog, product collections, um, customer reviews. We think of the blog article, again, as this asset that, has, um, that, is, that is so rich in its capability, um, but is, is limited right now by um, its, its lack of integration with the other elements in e-commerce that we're so constantly using. Um, today, uh, if, you, if you were to use the product, the article editor is fully built, templates are fully built, and in the, in the embeddable elements, we have embeddable products, embeddable product collections, uh, and over the next couple of months, you'll see us start to release more drag and drop functionality around um, user-generated content and customer reviews, as well as unsplash integration for images. The second major feature uh, in the product um, we think of as optimization, optimization and conversion tools. So these are lead capture forms, but more importantly, one of the things that we're most interested in is how do we actually learn um, who our audiences are and what they care about through their content consumption. And so the way that we have focused on doing this is enriching content, uh, enriching each article with metadata, and then um, associating that metadata with the unique email address of a subscriber, automatically exporting that into your ESP, Klaviyo, or MailChimp so that you can send um, segmented email, emails segmented by uh, the audience's content consumption interests. So again, this kind of goes back to Everly and their, their experience with the keto audience, but the ability to really tailor email marketing around content that fits a specific audience can be, can be so high performing, and that's, that's one of the things that we've been heavily focused on. And the third, the, the third major feature is attribution and, and, and audience segmentation. So in the past, we have found it so difficult for companies to intuitively understand whether or not a blog is impacting the business. And so what we're trying to, what we have tried to build with insights, uh, this is the name of the feature, is a very intuitive way to understand the blog's impact on the full funnel, from traffic to subscriber growth to revenue, and we're trying to take that a step further in, its, in, in the feature's next iteration um, in which we will provide um, insights about audience segmentation so that companies are, are able to make really actionable and fast decisions about what type of content to create next, uh, given, given the audience's engagement with the content that you've produced historically. And the final piece to our product, um, we call it our content marketplace but we've aggregated uh, thousands of articles from top publishers around the world, publishers like um, Oxygen Magazine and Outside Magazine and others, 
and our, our article marketplace is there for companies who want to supplement um, their own content creation with professional content that they can customize to their brand and embed with their products and use primarily in the context of email marketing and, and social. So that's, that's Matcha. Um, thank you so much for, for listening and thank you so much for considering our thesis around blogging and our bet that blogging plays a much more essential role uh, for e-commerce stores in the future. Um, we're, uh, we'd love to talk to you. Um, we'll, we'll be in the expo. And if you'd ever like to reach out or take a look at the product or talk to any of us about um, the, the data that we see from our customers, we're more than happy to talk. Uh, thanks again to Phil and Paula for putting this on. And thanks to everybody uh, who's, who's been in this presentation for being here. Thanks. Thank you.